Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a relatively interesting and somewhat unusual discovery of what happens when two neutron stars collide and what effects this produces as a result, something that the scientists really did not expect. And to be more exact, we're going to be discussing new observations coming from the iconic neutron star collision that produced a kilonova. An explosion very similar to a supernova, but usually not as powerful, but also responsible for the formation of a lot of elements that we generally consider to be very precious here on Earth. For example, it was discovered to be the main source of things like gold, platinum, and so on. But this particular collision seems to have resulted in something else the scientists really did not expect. It didn't just explode like what you're about to see in this simulation by NASA, it ended up producing a very unusual shape as a result not the same as you see right here. This is a predicted shape. Instead, this explosion resulted in a perfectly spherical shape. Something that at the moment the scientists really cannot explain, and something that definitely goes beyond our expectations, and also potentially means that there's something about neutron star collisions the scientists still don't understand. And so let's discuss these discoveries and what they mean for modern science, but I guess let's start with how all of this was detected, and how this began a completely new era of modern cosmology. This was actually only a few months after the detection of the first black hole collision by one of these detectors very similar to the one you see right here, which is called Virgo. This one is in Europe. This first black hole collision was such a groundbreaking discovery that it started to transform how we understood reality about other collisions as well. And the collision that they were really interested in discovering was the one between a black hole and a neutron star, or better even, two neutron stars. But nobody knew how frequent these are, but more importantly, nobody knew what effects this is going to create if one day we discover one of these somewhere out there. To everyone's surprise, sometime in 2017, both LIGO detectors and the Virgo detector discovered something unusual coming from the galaxy that you can kind of see right here. Or at least the vicinity of this galaxy, somewhere around this area. Intriguingly, around the same time, the gamma ray detectors have also picked up something really really powerful happening in NGC 4993, the galaxy you see right here. This was a very intriguing explosion, very different from a typical supernova, producing an extremely powerful gamma ray, which has always been predicted to be a result of neutron star collisions. But much more importantly, all of this happened approximately 1.7 seconds apart from the detection of gravitational waves. And for these two events to happen coincidentally in the same region is practically impossible, which meant that this was probably caused by the same event. Something collided, it was detected by gravitational wave detectors, and it was then picked up by various telescopes, first gamma ray detectors, and later other detectors as well. And because this was such an exciting event, huge amounts of data were collected during those few days. It also resulted in several different publications, including this one, you can find in the description, and just generally resulted in so many different ideas, studies, and theories proposed right after this detection that you can kind of see right there with this time lapse from the European Southern Observatory. Although I guess more ironically, it also sort of presented a major problem for a lot of alternative theories of modern physics. The biggest one was MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. It tries to explain dark matter by essentially changing the gravitational formula, and one of the biggest predictions in this theory is that gravitational waves should be traveling at very different speeds compared to electromagnetic waves, which means that according to this idea, the gravitational waves coming from this particular explosion should not have come within 1.7 seconds apart from the actual visual observations. And so following this observation, this particular idea faced itself with a major discrepancy it could not explain even today. But more importantly, as I mentioned before, the scientists learned that this particular explosion also created so many different heavier elements, and not just platinum, not just gold, also a lot of other stuff, like for example strontium. And though it might not sound as exciting as gold and platinum, Apparently, so much strontium was produced in this explosion that the scientists were then able to generate a kind of a geometrical shape based on the elemental detection itself, or essentially they were able to see how these elements were spreading away from the explosion and what kind of a shape they formed as a result. And well, everyone expected maybe something like this, some kind of a bidirectional shape or possibly some kind of a flattened shape, similar to what you see in the simulation from NASA, with this obviously being the gamma ray produced by the explosion itself. Now, all of this is based on many different simulations, computer simulations, that have always ended up creating these unusual pancake shapes. And that's sort of what the scientists expected, except that this is not what they saw from this observation when they looked at strontium. It seemed to produce something like this. Very spherical, almost perfectly spherical, 
almost resembling a ball. Now this is more of an artistic recreation, but this is based on mathematical models and all of the data collected over the past 5 years. You can find the actual numerical values in the paper in the description. But it really makes no sense for the scientists why it ended up releasing a ball and not some kind of a pancake. The detection here suggests that there's something we don't understand about the actual collision, and specifically probably something that happens right before the explosion itself. And so it's possible that up until this point, we understand most things, but right here something happens that results in the formation of a very different shape. The moment right before the collision, when they start spinning around one another several hundred times per second, something must happen inside the neutron stars to suddenly have them become a perfectly spherical object. Because it's really the only way we can explain why they end up releasing things in the ball formation. With one potential explanation here being that maybe there's just way way more energy in the center of the collision that ends up creating a perfectly spherical shape that would be otherwise somewhat asymmetrical. Or in other words, significantly more energy is generated by the resulting collision compared to all of the simulations in the past. And specifically right before they collapse into a black hole, because that's usually their fate after just a few milliseconds. And so right before the final collapse and the formation of a black hole in the center, previous studies have actually suggested that maybe these two neutron stars form some kind of a very very massive, very powerful magnetar, sometimes referred to as a hypermassive neutron star. And so for maybe just a fraction of a second, the neutron stars form a much larger, much more massive object that actually seems to maintain itself through extremely powerful magnetic fields. Or basically it avoids collapsing into a black hole, maybe for just under one second, because its magnetic fields are so ridiculously powerful and because it just spins ridiculously fast. But because its mass is higher than what should be possible, even the magnetic fields at some point collapse, which the scientists think might create some kind of a magnetic bomb. A huge explosion, dramatically magnified by the magnetic fields, with the enormous energy from the magnetic fields then released as the star collapses into the black hole. But it's the magnetic field that causes this perfectly spherical shape. And since strontium in this case is one of the lighter, heavy elements created in these explosions, it's produced in much higher amount and is also obviously much easier to see. And since the scientists expected to find a lot more heavier elements in this case, but instead discovered a lot more strontium, it implies that the explosion in this galaxy was very different in nature from what the scientists expected. And so not just spherical in shape, but also possessing elemental composition very different from what the scientists predicted, with neutrinos probably playing the most important role. But what's the main conclusion? Well, the main conclusion is that this explosion showed us we don't actually understand how neutron star collisions and following explosions actually physically work. There is still no clear indication of what happens right at the end of the collision and what happens before the black hole is formed, and more importantly, what kind of an object is generated for just a microsecond right at the end of the collision, and what effects this further on has on the explosion itself. But because this detection and explosion produce so much data that's actually still being analyzed even today, it's only a matter of time before the scientists discover something else unusual coming from this area, from this galaxy, approximately 140 million light years away from us. With the overall conclusion from various studies really implying that all of this results in some kind of a ultra powerful magnetar, a hypermagnetar, that exists just under one second, collapsing with very very powerful effects. That at least in theory could maybe exist even longer, somewhere out there in the rest of the universe. And maybe even not collapse into a black hole after all. But we'll talk more about these propositions and a lot of these other discoveries in regards to magnetars in some of the future videos. You can also check out some of the previous videos on this topic in the description below. Either way, at least for now, these are the main discoveries about this unusual explosion and the neutron star collision that happened in this area as well. We'll be coming back and talking more about this once the scientists learn something else. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.